Hi, it's Rachel from Tea and Forget Me Nots. Hi, welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and I upcycle furniture and decor and you can find all of my projects at teaandforgetmenots.com. So today's project is a bit of a different one as it's part of a YouTube hop with several other creators and we're all upcycling our own fall or autumn decor. So my project today is upcycling seven different glass bottles into vases that you can DIY on a budget for your autumn decor. But please check out the other YouTubers, there'll be a playlist with all of their projects and they include things like how to do a wreath for your front door and also how to make your house smell like autumn. Pretty exciting. All right, let's get into today's project. So here is my stash of glass bottles that I've been collecting for a little while. When I've come across an interesting bottle, I've just kept it in case I wanted to do something interesting with it in the future. And you'll notice, of course, there is one non-glass bottle here, and this is a vase. And this is a bonus project that I also just wanted to do, so I'll save that for the end. So the first step was to remove any of the stickers or labels that were still attached. So for that I put them all in a sink full of hot water and soap and that did a good job of removing most of the labels and where any of them were stubborn I used some acetone which is nail polish remover just to get rid of the last little bit. And here they are looking all shiny and new and ready for some creative freedom. So onto the first project and for this one I've used my very classy Nando's sauce bottle to create my first vase or autumn themed decor. And as is the case with most of the glass bottles that I'm upcycling today, I used a coat of a slick stick first. And unless you're using paint that is specific for glass, this is a great way to ensure that your paint sticks nicely and that your project will last. So the first one I did was Aubusson Blue, which is a chalk paint by Annie Sloan. And I just did one coat of this. I didn't need it to be too thick and full coverage because I was going to be painting over it. So the plan I had for this bottle needed two different coloured coats of paint. So after that had dried, I went on to the interesting step of applying the Crackle Glaze. And this is the step that will make the blue underneath visible after I've painted over it in a different colour. I gave the crackle glaze a good stir and then applied it all over with a brush making sure that it was all going in the same direction. And it was important that it was the same direction because I need to go in the opposite direction to apply my top coat of paint to get that crackle effect to work. Then onto the fun bit to see if this crackle has worked. So I applied a top coat of salt water, which is a white, and I applied it horizontally all around the bottle. And you want quite a thick amount of paint on the brush so that it really chips up and gives that cracked look. And you can see it working straight away. And the variation between how much glaze was put on and how much paint there is as well between the big cracks and smaller cracks. And then I sealed the piece with some clear coat in satin, just to give it a light sheen. So whilst blue is not a traditional autumn colour, I did this deliberately so that it would contrast with the reds and oranges in the flowers that I would pair this with. Fernando's, I think you've done really well. I love this little crackle effect vase. And it's got so much potential for fun things to do on other projects too. So onto my second project and this is in complete contrast to the first project in that the glass bottle itself that it's going to get the autumnal fall colours. And this was a gin bottle and again I've just started by coating it with a slick stick. And my aim for this vase is to blend a lovely combination of red, orange into yellow so the autumn leaves for a really bright and vibrant vase. So the three paints I used were Rustic Red, Marigold and Daffodil. So all quite bright, bold colours in their own right. And the best way to blend a piece is to start with a solid base coat of each of the colours that you're going to use. Because you don't want to blend and see that white underneath. If you blend, you want to see the solid colour underneath so it makes it look more impactful. 
I didn't want the red to be too overpowering so I gave the orange a slightly bigger section because that is the bit that was going to be merging into the yellow and red. For the second coat I got a fresh layer of each colour of paint. I had the three paint brushes for each of the three colours which were wet from the second coat of paint and then also a dry neutral brush that I'd be using to blend the colours. You want a dry neutral paintbrush to do the blending because if you've got any of the paint colours on that brush it's just going to add more paint rather than creating that nice mixture. And blending is essentially just an exercise in patience to get to the look that you're happy with. And the goal is just to take out any solid line or block of colour so that there is a gradient between the two colours but you could blend more or less depending on the style that you're going for. And I really liked the colour combination that this created, so I actually used a matte flat paint for the top coat and sealer, which wouldn't give it any shine, and the finish would be exactly as if I hadn't put a top coat on. It reminds you of both autumn leaves and a sunset, and I think it's just really lovely. And because it's quite small, it adds just a bold splash of colour and something that's so easy to do yourself. So on to project three, and this is a really fun one. And in fact, of course, this isn't a glass bottle. This is a glass vase that I had from Ikea and wanted to do this experiment with. And that is to create a mercury glass effect on this vase. And you might wonder what does mercury glass have to do with autumn? But metallics are trendy this autumn, so it's a good one to try out for yourself. And if you don't know, mercury glass is that silvery mirror-like surface that often has gold or black underneath it. It looks like a tarnished mirror and is really beautiful and also really easy to DIY. So to start with, I used some mirror spray paint. Now it's important that this is a mirror rather than just silver or grey spray paint, otherwise the effect won't work. And I sprayed the inside of the vase and then used a mix of both water and vinegar, which essentially removes some of that paint and creates that bubbly texture, which is how you get the holes and makes some of the effect see through rather than completely opaque. I think it looks really cool just as it is, it almost looks like it's raining on the inside of this vase and I would have been quite happy to stop here but I did have another step that I wanted to try just to see if it made more of an impact. So I did two coats of this process of using the mirror spray paint and the vinegar and water solution. And after that had dried I used some black matte spray paint and just sprayed it inside. And I didn't want it solid black inside because I wanted some of it to be able to catch the light as well, so again I used some vinegar and just dabbed away a little bit of where the paint was still wet. And you could also do this with gold rather than black for a different look. If you wanted to use this with real flowers and water, I would put just a second container on the inside and make sure that the water and flowers went directly into that rather than this vase with the spray paint on it. It was really hard to get a nice photo and video of this at the end because of course I was in most of the reflections but it does look really beautiful in person and in this one I've got some fairy lights on the inside just so you can see where there are those see-through patches still where it catches the shimmering light and it's really pretty. Okay, so project four, and this is my whiskey bottle. So again, I started with a coat of a slick stick. And my favorite bit about this bottle is the brand logo that's embossed on the glass and gives the piece a little bit of dimension. But my plan is to add a lot more dimension to it as I wanted to add some rough texture. So for this I used Sea Spray, which is a texture additive that you stir into paint and as you apply the paint it gives you a thick rough surface. 
So this texture will hopefully make it look a bit more rustic and natural looking, which is of course the opposite of the shape of this bottle, which very much does not look like it is made in nature. But it was fun for a bit of contrast. So for the first coat of paint I used a mixture of the colours Oyster and Baja Grey and mixed in just a little bit of the sea spray to give it that thick base coat. And it's starting to look a little bit like rough concrete. Then for the second coat I focused more on the lighter paint colour and added even more of the sea spray so that it would add some variation to the paint and some highlights and really roughen up that surface even more. Then as a way to seal it and also add a little bit more depth of colour, I sealed it with a wax in grunge grey and it made it look a bit more darker, a bit more dirtier and more interesting. Then for the final step I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer like it would be catching the light in the autumn sun so I used some more furniture wax in sparkling gold just to add some highlights over those rough bits of texture and make them stand out even more. Okay, so on to project five, and this might be my favorite. It's probably the simplest, but it's also really cute. So here I actually have two coffee bottles, and they seem too good not to have a purpose for, rather than just putting them in the recycling. So I pictured them looking like milk bottles. So I painted them solid white, again with salt water. And you can see the difference between just the slick stick and the salt water and, it, and just that extra coat gives it a slightly more even coverage. And then to seal the bottles, again I did a clear coat in satin. On to the fun bit and that was the decoration. And I thought it would be a cute idea to put some labels on these bottles. So I got some modelling clay and some cookie cutter stamps and I stamped out two different sets of words that I thought would make a cute little combination so I stamped out autumn leaves and also muddy puddles. So for the muddy puddles I painted them again in the salt water to make them blend in nicely with the colour of the bottle and then to make the imprinted words stand out more I used some furniture wax in sparkling copper as the sealer and I chose sparkling copper because it's slightly browny so it would go with the muddy puddles but also of course it had a bit of a shimmer so it would make it a bit more interesting a bit more sparkly. Then for the autumn leaves labels I used a combination of the marigold orange and the rustic red and did a gradient from the red to orange to make them stand out quite a lot from the bottles and be that autumnal pop of colour. And I used a small artist brush for this step because I wanted to make sure that I didn't paint into the grooves of where the letters were stamped so that they would stand out by being white still. And to finish, of course, I sealed this with a clear coat in satin. I attached both of the labels with string to the bottle separately so that both of them would be visible. And I just think these are really cute and you could personalise them to say anything and even give them as a little gift. Just a really sweet idea. So onto the tiniest one of the day and this is again another small whiskey bottle. And this is the first time using Fleur paint and actually this is a paint that you can put directly onto the glass without needing a product like Slick Stick. But because I hadn't decided which project I was going to be using which paint on when I primed them all, that is why I still put some Slick Stick on this one. So I did this one in a slightly different style in that again I used a small artist brush and just made some pretty messy brush strokes. I wanted to give it a bit of texture. So I didn't try and get a nice flat even surface. 
If I had done a second coat it would have made it more of an opaque look but I really liked the texture and the slight variation that you could see some of the lighter white underneath so I left it just with that one coat. And to create that extra dimension I used some brown wax on the top and just dabbed it into some of the grooves and it gave it a bit more of a dirtier aged look. And I think the combination of the orange and the brown really captures those leafy autumnal colours. And I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I do. I think this is one of my surprise favourites in that it's really simple but really beautiful and it almost looks like bricks to me. And there's a lot of depth to it considering how simple and quick it was to do. So for the last project which was the surprise one, which is not a glass bottle but is a vase that actually I think previous people who lived in my house left here. So because it had the raised section of the symbol on it, I knew I wanted to use even more texture to cover that up. So I got some Dixie mud in white, which is something you could use for raised stencils or even as a wood filler. And it used a lollipop stick just to slather it on. Not in any particular neat pattern, it's quite rough and organic. And I almost would have stopped where it was, but there was a slight variation in tone between where there was the thicker Dixie mud and the slick stick underneath. So to keep it similar, I just did one coat of paint in Endless Shore, which is a creamy colour. and they gave it a more even tone across the piece to help the texture really take centre stage. So it's created a neutral vase which will really help the autumnal flowers stand out and look really beautiful. Seven projects that are really simple DIYs on a budget. Thanks so much for watching. Which of these glass bottles was your favourite? I know I have mine and it's definitely the little muddy puddles, it's just too cute. And don't forget to check out the other projects from the YouTubers in the playlist for all your full DIY decor inspiration. Thanks so much for watching, until next time, bye! If you're interested in any of the products I've mentioned today, I will list them down below so you can find out more information about them. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or watching another video in the playlist.